I'd like to demonstrate VMware's SIOC integration into CloudStack used with SolidFire. I've got a couple virtual machines here. We're going to focus on VMVS-1. I'll go ahead and click on the name here. And we can see in the details as I scroll down the compute offering of interest to us. SF SIOC CO for Compute Offering 1. Let's take a look at that. I'll go over to the Service Offerings area and click on that and then click on the name of the Compute Offering. We can see here when I made this Compute Offering I specified a minimum number of IOPS at 3000 and a maximum at 4000. So if we go back to our instance, selected here, we need to have at least 3,000 minimum IOPS on our solid fire volume and 4,000 maximum IOPS on our solid fire volume to support this particular instance. Now before we get around to looking at the solid fire GUI and seeing those numbers, Let's take a look at the VCP, the vCenter ser server plugin of SolidFires. I'll switch over to my Windows environment. And in the vSphere web client, I've clicked on the SolidFire plugin for VCP. In the clusters tab, we can see that I've discovered a SolidFire cluster, just one cluster in this case. And on this particular cluster, I have a couple solid fire volumes that I created through this plugin, and I created data stores, a, a data store on each of these volumes through this plugin. So that work has already been done. We, we have two solid fire volumes. We'll focus on the one uh, labeled vol-1 with the data store named ds-1. But both of these solid fire volumes and both data stores were created through this, this uh, vCenter server plugin of solid fires. Now, if I go over to the solid fire GUI, clicking on the solid fire GUI, we can see that I do just have, I actually just have two solid fire volumes at present. And again, we'll focus just on the one labeled vol-1. I'll highlight that one. At present, we only have a single virtual disk within the data store that's in this solid fire volume. And that being the case, it's the root disk for that virtual machine that we had looked at earlier. And recalling that the compute offering that the VM was spun up with required 3,000 minimum IOPS and 4,000 maximum IOPS for the virtual disk, for the root disk. And that's what we see here. And there's actually a multiplication factor four times max IOPS, which is configurable in the, the Solid Fire VCP. And that's how we arrived at 16,000 burst IOPS. Now, what I'd like to do is add a data disk to demonstrate the process of adding an additional disk to our VM which has its own performance requirements and then watching that automatically update on the solid fire side to support those additional IOPS. Now we're back in the CloudStack GUI under the service offerings tab looking at our disk offerings. I've got a couple of them. Let's take a look at the one SFSIOC1 I'll go ahead and click on that name. And if I scroll down, we can see minimum IOPS at 200, maximum at 400. Now that we have that in mind, let's go over to the Storage tab and create a brand new volume. I'll click on the Add button in the upper right hand corner. Let me go ahead and label this Vol-1. The disk offering of interest is already selected, so we're actually able to just hit the OK button at this point. 
In a moment, this information will be added to CloudStack's cloud database and we'll be able to go ahead and attach this to our virtual machine. Let's go ahead over in the Quick View column and select Attach Disk. And I'm going to pick VMVS-1. That's the virtual machine that we were looking at before. And now I'll go ahead and hit the OK button. In just a moment, this new virtual disk will be attached to our virtual machine. And then we're going to go ahead and take a look at the IOPS on the SolidFire volume. Now we're back in the SolidFire GUI and about ready to check on our new quality of service for volume vol-1. Now remember, the data disk that we attached was associated with a disk offering with a minimum of 200 IOPS and a maximum of 400 IOPS. Previously, we only had a single virtual disk that was being run on the data store that's on Vol-1. That virtual disk required 3,000 minimum IOPS and 4,000 maximum IOPS. So now the, the cumulative numbers that we should see are 3,000 plus 200 equaling 3,200 minimum IOPS and 4,000 plus 400 for the maximum, so 4,400 IOPS there. Let's switch over to quality of service. And we can see, in fact, that we do see 3,200 minimum IOPS, 3,000 for our root disk, 200 for our data disk. Over with max IOPS, we see 4,000 plus 400. 4,000 for our root disk, 400 for our data disk. Okay, great. So now we see that our SolidFire volume can respond to the needs of the virtual disks that are placed on the data store that's on our SolidFire volume. But how did we do this? So in CloudStack, I've written an API plugin that interacts with v VMware's vCenter server. And as you issue an API command to that, to that API plugin, it will go through and figure out for all of the virtual disks that are on the data stores that have that particular storage tag, go figure out what are the minimum and the maximum IOPS requirements and send that to vCenter server in the form of disk resource shares and limit IOPS. So to make this a bit more concrete, let's switch over to a command line interface. And we can see here, I used a common tool uh, for CloudStack uh, called CloudMonkey. And I issued an API command called update SIOC info. That is supported by the new API plugin. I told it what zone to look in, and I told it what storage tag of interest I wanted it to examine. Now if we switch over to the CloudStack GUI, go over to the CloudStack GUI in the infrastructure, and we look at primary storage. I have uh, probably, let's see here, four different local primary storages, but the one of interest for us for this demonstration is the one called PS-1. This, I'll click on, this is primary storage that's based on the data store called DS-1, which is placed on the solid fire volume Vol-1. And if we look here, we can see it has a storage tag of SFSIOC1. That is what maps, I'll go back to our command line interface, to this area here. So now the API plugin will go through, let's go back to CloudStack, it will look at all shared primary storages that have this particular storage tag as one of their storage tags. In this particular environment, it's a little simple. There's only one primary storage that has this storage tag. So once we have that, 
we can go through and see what cloud stack volumes are on that particular data store and for each of those they should have a minimum and a maximum IOPS requirement for each of those we can then translate that the minimum IOPS translates into the disk resource shares on the VMware side and the maximum IOPS into the limit IOPS on the VMware side so those commands are then sent from the CloudStack API plugin to a vCenter server which updates the information in its own database. Now on an interval of your selection the SolidFire SIOC plugin will check the database on the VMware side for the virtual disks and it will update the SolidFire QoS settings as is appropriate as we saw in the uh, prior example there. So for example again using those same numbers we originally started with a solid fire volume that had 3,000 minimum IOPS and 4,000 maximum IOPS. And that was because there was only a single root disk in our data store, and its disk resource shares were set at 3,000, and its limit IOPS were set at 4,000. So that was very easy. That was just take 3,000 disk resource shares and make the solid fire min IOPS 3000. Do the same thing with limit IOPS to max IOPS. And then we made it a little bit more complicated by adding another virtual disk, a data disk, which had a requirement for 200 minimum IOPS and 400 maximum IOPS. And so now we took the 3000 for the root disk, added the 200 for the data disk, and the solid fire volume was set at 3200 min IOPS and then a similar concept was applied for the maximum IOPS. Now let's go ahead and analyze this a bit more from the solid fire point of view. We can see here using that same example that we have 3200 minimum IOPS. Now on the VMware side we know, or rather VMware knows, that there are two virtual disks. The one having 3000 of the 3200 disk resource shares and the other only having 200. Therefore they will split the solid fire min IOPS of 3200 appropriately between them. Same kind of a concept for max IOPS but that number on the VMware side comes from the limit IOPS value and limit IOPS is essentially a roof on the number of IOPS a particular disk can have. So in this particular case we see that our data disk can only have 400 IOPS at most and our root disk can ha have only 4000. So you would expect on the solid fire side to see the number be the addition of both of those 4400. Now let's talk again about the invocation of the API in CloudStack that makes this possible. So really we have virtual machines being started, stopped, data disks being attached, deta detached uh, frequently in our cloud potentially. And ideally you would have some kind of a background process invoking this update SIOC info command perhaps every 30 seconds or on some, uh, some interval. And that way we'd collect that information from the CloudStack database and send it over to VMware's database in a timely fashion. And then when the information is in VMware's data, database, the SolidFire VCP, vCenter server plugin, its SIOC component needs to check the VMware database on some frequency and pull that information out so that it knows how to properly set the QoS on the solid fire volume in question. And so if we look over here, I'll switch over to my Windows environment, I'm on the solid fire plugin, we can go over to the settings area and we can see right now that I have that interval set at 30 seconds. So this is kind of the 
the glue that makes this all work and provides a uh, an SIOC functionality from CloudStack with SolidFire.